All right, so truth be told, I've been looking forward to Antlers since the beginning of 2020 when it was first announced. The initial trailer unsettled me just something awful, but the most recent trailer left me a little uncertain of how good it might be. Well, I've now seen it, and I can say without a doubt that this movie is awesomely... In an isolated Pacific Northwest town, a middle school teacher and her sheriff brother become embroiled with her enigmatic student, whose dark secrets lead to terrifying encounters with a legendary being. All right, so first of all, this is an absolutely beautifully shot film, and the cinematography of the landscapes is stunning. Now, this takes place in Oregon, but looks like it's in northern Washington, but it was really filmed in Canada. There are so many wonderful shots of mist-covered forests and serene-looking lakes, and these peaceful locales really contrast nicely with the horrors that the story unveils. There are also some shots that feature the landscape at night, and then they use this top-down aerial shot, which is just outstanding. And typically in these, the camera is following a vehicle, so the headlights or flashing police lights are the only illumination that sporadically lights up the landscapes. And this again creates isolation, loneliness, and dread. The narrative focuses on a teacher, played by Carrie Russell, her sheriff brother, played by Jesse Plemons, and a student, played by Jeremy T. Thomas. Each are damaged in ways that draw us into their characters, but also keep them at arm's distance from us at times. The story centers around folklore, and while there is an explanation about the lore, I would have appreciated a little bit more information or backstory around it. Now, there is enough given to inform us, so it's not like the story is lacking in this regard. I just wanted to be enveloped more into the beliefs that come into play for the narrative. This story does a good job of building the tension, too. I mean, pretty much from the very start, there is an uneasiness and dread that is present. And then some action occurs, which solidifies those feelings. And when we meet our main players, the mood is already set in motion for what is about to play out. So if you've seen the trailers, it's shown that the young boy is bringing what is assumed to be food to something that is locked up in a house. And it lurks in the shadows, but the timidness is clearly seen on the boy's face. I love that the movie takes its time in revealing imagery to us. There was a scene where the camera was focusing on a keyhole of a door, and just some gnarly sounds are coming from behind that door, and we get to see some vague movement through shadows. As the camera pushed in, I was yelling in my brain, I mean, don't show it, don't show it, nah, no, nah, not yet, not yet. Wait longer, because I didn't want to be shown what was in the shadows just yet. I was really enjoying the buildup and wanted that suspense to continue for a while. Luckily, the movie heard my thoughts, and it didn't show us anything other than just an ambiguous glimpse of what was behind that door. Now, this is a slow burn horror, and it's very atmospheric in the way that the tension builds. There are a lot of shots where the camera will slowly track or push in on a subject, drawing out the scene to either capture the isolation of the surroundings or to let us linger on something that's unsettling. Scott Cooper, who's the director of this, he knows how to make slow burn movies. I mean, two that he's done that I really enjoyed are Black Mass and Hostels, with that latter one being an extremely patient story. But as much as this is a slow burn, when the violence erupts, it's quite visceral and intense. I mean, there is gore that is shown throughout, but not all of it comes as a result of violence. Sometimes we just see the remains of something, but it's still nasty to look at. There's a character design in this that is just mesmerizing and horrifying. And while I had an idea of what the character would be before it's shown, how it turned out to be was way more satisfying. And the reveal is also just as gratifying. I mean, I laughed out loud because it was so unexpected. The practical effects were awesome to look at, and when it came to the gore, they were disgusting and gruesome all at the right moments. Now, the story is designed to suck us in because the three main characters share impersonal horrors. Now, the boy is said to have experienced some extended trauma, but I'm not sure I buy it just based on what we're shown throughout the story. Now, it's alluded to that the boy's father was abusive, but everything we see in regards to the father contradicts that. Now, I would love to dive into that more because there's a lot to cover, but it gets pretty heavy into spoilers, so I'm just going to leave that part there. Now, when the climax comes, the intensity ramps up quite a bit, and there is a lot of tense excitement. And there's also a portion where characters have to make some decisions that I thought were pretty heartbreaking. During one of the final sequences, I thought one action was going to take place with a character, but something else happened instead. Now, I love that it was different than what I had expected, and that I didn't see it coming, which was ultimately then more satisfying. As dark as this story gets at points, I think it had the opportunity to go even deeper into the darkness and really exploit some of the themes. Now, this is an hour and 39 minutes, and it really could have taken just a few additional minutes to dive more into the traumas of the players and then connect them all in just a messed up story arc that would complement the core narrative. 
When all is said and done, I had some fun with antlers. The practical effects and the character reveal make the slow buildup just totally worth it. And the cinematography and settings are also beautifully captured, helping to create just this foreboding and isolating atmosphere for the characters to engage with. I loved the infusion of folklore into this story and also enjoyed how flawed and damaged our main characters are. And despite everything I loved about this, there's still something that's nagging at me that I can't quite put my finger on. I mean, I even delayed recording this review for quite a while just to see if I could figure it out, but no luck. So to be fair, since I can't pinpoint it, I'm not gonna let it affect my score too much. There's no sex, I think maybe some very brief nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of gory violence. I give Antlers three and a half out of five couches. What's a movie you love that utilizes folklore in its storytelling? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.